guys welcome to this tutorial my name is Sel, and I'm happy to come your way once again now in this video we're gonna be looking at the ISO 45001 and I must say this is the first of the series of videos that we're making on all our auditing tools because we have a lot of amazing auditing tools that are all based on the same structure so I'll be very excited to share that with you now this tool has been designed specifically for conducting audits on the occupational health and safety management system in accordance with the ISO standard and what makes this tool very unique is that it has a lot of amazing features that I'm very excited to share with you so without further ado let's get straight into it now over here we have the table of content that comprises of all the sheets within the workbook and they've all been hyperlinked in here for easy navigation so rather than using the arrow in here you can simply use the links over here and then you'll be directed to the specific sheet. Now, this is the approved list where we've provided a list of root causes, action priority, and action status. And I must say, the approved list is an important input for the non conformance CAPA and action plan sheets here because they will populate in there as a drop down. All right, so if you want to update, you need to make sure you're updating the list of all the root causes. Now, currently, we've provided just a few of them based on the non-conformance that to be identified however you have the option to build on it all right so action priority is high medium and low and then open and close now over here is the audit scoring criteria which is based on the standard audit findings so we have compliance ofi minor ncs major nc and we have their definitions in here and then the actions that you need to take all right now over here is the main audit checklist which is based on all the audit questions that have been extracted from the iso 45001 standard so here we have the the clause numbers right the clause number the sub clauses and all the references to the various questions within the standard and then we have the main clauses also you know populated in here to give us an insight when we are carrying out our audit that which just for us to know which you know which specific clause we are auditing rather than having to scroll up you know to look at it we've taken our time to provide them all throughout so that at any given you know section as you complete your audit questions you know that this is the clause that you are auditing and over here as you can see we have all the audit questions in there and they've been grouped according to the clause the sub clause and the relevant audit questions that fulfills the requirements of the clause all right now this very sheet this very you know column can be reviewed by the user but currently we've logged it up however if you want to review it all you need to do is just go to the you know the welcome page grab the password and then go to the review tab click on unprotect worksheet enter the password and now you can have access to now review this however we've done the work for you now over here has been dedicated for expectation that is those of you who want to take a deep dive into the various audit questions and then extract some sort of expectation whether in the form of documented information that is all up to you however if you're not interested in this column you can simply hide it now over here is for the responses all right according to compliance minor major and ofi and in responding to the various audit questions you simply denote it with x you know to the various types of findings and then you you realize that they would automatically calculate up here for you so for instance if i got rid of x you realize that the findings then reduces so this portion has been password protected to prevent users from accidentally deleting it because these summaries are all the summation of the responses now over here we have the audit evidence and this 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 is where you provide the evidence of your audit finding whether it's compliance minor or a major compliance non-compliance sorry and then we have also here for opportunity for improvement as per your audit finding now these other columns are all based on calculations you have no business here because they help in computing you know the percentage level of compliance for those clauses you know for those clauses and uh, you are not supposed to tamper with it now over here is the audit summary now the audit summary is coming from the audit checklist as you take your time to complete your responses and all these calculates automatically they get populated in here so this sheet has been pre-designed to prevent users from making mistakes and they have all been you know protected 
and we have the clause numbers, the sub clauses, and a helper column that we provided, which we further reviewed it to make sure that we have the clause numbers in front of the sub clauses so that Excel can present the data in a chronological order. And we did the same thing for, for this very sheet as well. And then we have all the summation of the, comp the audit findings and the percentage levels of compliance. So this very sheet is a source data for the dashboard and the various other reports within the workbook. Over here, you're not supposed to tamper with it because it is simply for information purpose, all right? You don't have to input anything here. Everything populates automatically. Now, over here, we have the non-conformance CAPA and action plan. So CAPA is simply corrective and preventive action. Now, this looks like three in one because the minor and the major non-conformance will automatically populate here together with their respective you know, reference numbers, the audit questions, you know, the main clause and the sub clause, they all populate automatically. So as you are busy completing your audit checklist, automatically you should expect that the minor and the major non-conformance will populate here automatically, all right? And all you need to do next is just, you know, select the root cause from the drop-down. And mind, remember that the drop-down is coming from the approved list. And then you can further provide a corrective action and a preventive action assign person who is responsible, set a target date, and then you can assign the priority, whether high, medium, or low, and also provide an action status. So if the action is opened, automatically you have the days due being counted for you, all right? Now, if the action has been closed, then there's not a report on days due. So this sheet is, is very much automated, all right? So as you, for instance, as you, you know, complete your audit response, all right, the NCs automatically properly. Now, if I go rid of those responses and we go to the action plan log, you realize that there's nothing showing here because we have sort of, you know, um, gotten rid of those NCs. Now, if I broke back those NCs and we go to the action plan log, you realize that they appear back again. All right, now next is the audit uh, reports. So this audit report is just a template that we've provided in here just for you to utilize, for users to utilize in providing their audit report, especially those who don't have a very specific, you know, template that they use. You can utilize this. However, if you don't need it, you can simply hide it. Now, this is the most exciting part of this tool, all right? We have the, the, the excitement is that after you have done with your audit, you should be able to see the performance of the organization that you are auditing. And this dashboard does just that. Now, over here, you can tell the number of audit questions within the auditing tool. You can tell the number that is compliant, the number of major NC, number of minor NCs, and the number of OFIs. And over here, we have the various levels of compliance in accordance with the various you know, clauses of the standard. So from context all the way to improvement. And over here, we have the sum of the audit findings organized according to the clauses. So we can tell over here the planning, for instance, has the most, you know, uh, requirements of the standard being in compliance, all right? And over here, we have the overall audit score. So audit score will now tell us that the organization has performed quite well. They have achieved 87% of the standard, you know, clause requirements, basically. So the organization is doing quite well. Now, over here, we have the ISO, you know, the levels of compliance, which are organized like phrase. Then we have the tables and graphs. So these are all pivot tables and pivot chart that we use to put together this dashboard. However, we've provided them in here for you, for your own internal reporting, so that uh, in case you're putting together like uh, an executive summary that you want to share with stakeholders, like top management, then you can utilize some of these graphs, you know, to put together your report. Now, over here, is the various you know sub clauses together with their reference numbers and present they have been presented in a chronological order from 4.1 all the way to 10.3 and then we have the various levels of compliance you know to assign to them and then we have the actions status whether open or closed so we have seven to one open and then one closed then this one is coming from the you know nc because over here you can tell that you know of all the actions you have only one closed and the rest are actually open so this is a very exciting tool you know that you can utilize to come to do your 
audit in accordance with ISO 35001. Now, the big question is how can you use this tool? All right, so this is quite obvious, right? What you need to do is that you take your time to get rid of all these responses. That's the first thing you need to do. Get rid of all these responses. So without wasting time, I'm going to speed up and do that real quick. So now that we are done deleting all the responses within the audit checklist, what we need to do next is we go to the data tab on the menu, all right, and then we click on refresh all. And as you can see, everything vanishes, there's nothing to report. And then we go to the non conformance, corrective and preventive action, and then action plan log. You realize that now everything, everything is actually gone. So what we need to do now is that we take our time. You know, to get rid of all these, all right? All right, so now, as we can see, the worksheet is now ready for our own data. So now everything in here is, you know, is empty. There's nothing in there, nothing in there. Everything is gone accept this okay i click on refresh all and then this one also vanishes all right so there's nothing in here again and all these ones now they turn into zero as you can see so because there's nothing in our checklist so now we take our time so assuming i started com computing i mean completing the checklist as i did mention you denote x you know for any non-conformer like as you respond to the other question now when we come to the end so you realize that they will automatically populate for us and then we have to now provide a root cause which is for instance here will be inadequate organizational context and then we provide a creative action we assign a responsible person at the hsc manager we set it you know we provide a creative action you know whatever you want to write basically we set it target dates and then we can tell that automatically we have the days due you know being calculated for us and you select whether it's high medium low and then you know the action parity so that's basically it so you know let's bring back our data like how it was before Now that we have our data back, you know, what we need to do next is that we just go to a dash data tab on the menu, you know, and then we click on refresh all. All right. So this is how uh, it was earlier on when we started. Right. So this, this is a very interesting template. Once you're done with an audit, what you need to do is that you can keep a copy of it, you know, as a form of audit report or even an, an evidence that you carried out an audit. So this like a record that you can keep all right for future reference and then when you want to do another audit you simply create another copy of it and then you utilize it so next time when you are doing audits you don't have to really delete everything all throughout but you can now take your time to change them but of course you need to get rid of all the other ones that were not i mean that are not relevant so basically what you need to do is that you need to get rid of everything and clear the worksheet you know to make sure that it's all blank and then take your time to complete your audit checklist and then you have all the others populated automatically for you so thank you guys for watching cheers